All right, thank you so much. Uh, so uh, I think I'm going to continue the um, issue of sort of uh, reconstruction, different kinds of disasters in my context. Um, I, I just I took the, uh, the the remit of the of the discussion um, sort of topic very literally, which I don't often do, and I wanted to talk about um, the effect that shelter has on health in the aftermath of natural disaster. Um, I decided to pick something that I didn't know that much about because I only have seven minutes. It usually takes me seven minutes to sort of get through my first slide. Um, so I just wanted to open up a conversation. I don't claim to have answers or you know uh, have a definitive set of um, uh, recommendations, but it was really just something meant to uh, stimulate a conversation. Um, so I just wanted to start with a quick uh, demographic reality. This shows uh, population trends over time globally. And uh, the only thing that I wanted to point out is that um, if you look at the light blue line, that is the uh, number of, um, of uh, the population in thousands of millions, so in billions of people, um, who will be living in urban uh, areas in underdeveloped countries or in underdeveloped regions. So the percentage of poor people living in urban regions is going to uh, skyrocket over the next, uh, now we're on 40 years. This, I, I wanted to sort of um, uh, superimpose that idea on another uh, trend, and you know, again, these are rough, rough quantitative trends, that we see an increasing number of natural disasters. I put natural in quotes because you know, I, I, I recognize that it's a, a complicated um, topic uh, and a complicated concept. Um, I also think that a lot of this is due to increase in reporting. Um, but the point is, is that uh, our weather is getting kind of crazy. We have uh, a confluence of really um, uh, strange weather uh, events and uh, and a dramatic increase in the number of people living in poor urban uh, neighborhoods, and we have a, a kind of a potential catastrophe on our hands. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit, not about, uh, not so much about um, storms or hurricanes, although I, I think that what I'm going to say uh, works equally well for that, but I wanted to um, talk about a, an event that I know a little bit more about than some of the others uh, that, that, you know, that are more sort of hurricane, tornado type things. Um, and that's the 2010, January 12th, 2010, uh, Haiti earthquake. Um, we know, I think all of you know, that uh, there's a tremendous amount of infrastructure in the country destroyed. Um, it killed about 250,000 people, destroyed at least 200,000 homes, displaced uh, 1.2 million people, the majority of which were poor and living in uh, the capital, Port-au-Prince, and caused $7.8 billion in damages. You know, we, we can uh, quibble with the numbers, but the point is, is that it did a lot of damage. Um, one of the, the, the hardest, uh, um, one of the biggest issues was the loss of homes for, uh, for so many people living in, in an urban area. Um, you know, uh, I think just to make the link to health and, and, uh, and architecture, um, shelter is obviously a, a major public health issue. It's recognized as a basic human right by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and also the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights. Um, and there are all kinds of reasons why people need to have shelter here. Um, in a place like Haiti, and, and in many of the places where poor people live in, an urban, in urban environments, um, there is very limited access to quality housing. The biggest impediment being poverty. You can't afford to uh, either rent uh, a, a decent dwelling or to build one. Um, even if you do have money, there are lax or non-existent building codes, which is a major issue. Um, building methods uh, in, in many of these areas emerge in the context of low resource and lack of low resources and lack of regulations. Um, so you have you know you don't have building inspectors uh, in, in most of these areas, um, and you don't have uh, good material. Um, a bigger issue, actually, or a very a very important issue, is also uh, the lack of land rights or legal claim to a dwelling. This becomes a particularly um, difficult issue when we're talking about reconstruction. When, when someone doesn't have any claim to the place where they were living, um, how, do we engage, how, you know, how do we engage them in efforts to, to reconstruct? Um, so the big question is how to reduce vulnerability in the long term in the context of, of housing and natural disasters. Um, there are lots of technical technological solutions. Uh, I didn't have time to show any, but if you go onto YouTube or you know, any, any of your favorite search engines and you type in uh, you know, shelter or housing and natural disaster, you'll get all sorts of amazing videos of um, really beautiful dwellings that people have uh, constructed. Probably, I wish there were more people from the School of Architecture here because I'm sure there have been some projects. Habitat for Humanity has all of these amazing, you know, sort of animations of how you can build a low-cost, beautiful um, structure in uh, a short amount of time. 
but but there are but but there are so many issues that don't have anything don't have any technical or technological solutions uh, that need to be addressed. Um, I just wanted to point out that there were no Haitians immune from the uh, from the effects of the earthquake. This is the the National Palace. This is this is the White House. Uh, you know, this is the the sort of um, the central government building of, uh, of Haiti. Um, but some people are more vulnerable than others. You can see that the kinds of uh, um, less than stellar construction methods and materials here. People build with what they have, um, where they find space. So in the aftermath of a disaster, whether it's an earthquake or a, a storm or a, you know, a, a hurricane, whatever the case may be, there, there's the immediate response. And that the traditional uh, approach has been to get people shelter as quickly as possible. So this is where you see the international community coming in and providing uh, temporary shelters. Uh, the problem is that um, these, uh, these shelters are built on land that's available, that, that, that's clear, and people are sort of brought to these, um, these displaced persons, person camps based on where they're spaced, not necessarily on existing social ties. Um, and is that one minute already? Okay. Um, and the other issue is that these, these structures often become long-term housing. Um, so these, you know, there, there are some people still living in conditions like this. Um, there's been a move to, uh, uh, to try and maintain uh, community and social relations in, in this context. What I wanted to talk to you more, a little bit more was about um, rebuilding. There are three directives that I see in this literature that I don't think are totally reconcilable. Um, we want to reduce vulnerability with the new construction and the repairs that we make. We want to provide materials, resources, and assistance that allow people to rebuild their own homes in the way that they want to. Um, but we can't, at the same time as we want people to do it themselves, we can't let them do it themselves because it's inefficient. So I don't really think these approaches are, are, are reconcilable. Um, we also need to deal with the, the problem of, of land tenure. When people don't have any legal claim, when there are no uh, contractual, when there's no contractual proof that they actually live somewhere, when reconstruction is being carried out, um, people who have more power might be able to, uh, to take over particular pieces of land. Um, so how do we help these individuals? And then I think there are just general ethical or moral uh, challenges. Um, how do we, uh, do we want to improve conditions over the long term, which may necessitate not building until things get uh, worked out, um, like changes in uh, construction practice? Do we want to bring in workers from outside? Um, do we want to demand, as it, uh, does the international community want to demand legal changes in, in land tenure? before any rebuilding takes place? Or do we just want to get people back in houses because um, without houses you can't have help? Um, and then a final one, uh, sh you know, should, should the international community be involved in repairing existing infrastructure, including housing, with the knowledge that proper maintenance is often unlikely and the probability of future failure is quite likely? So I'll stop there and uh, um, did I get it in under seven minutes? Did I make it under seven minutes? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. That's it. Oh, and I, um, I just wanted to, I'll show these later, but this is some, some really interesting stuff on, on crisis mapping. I just wanted to throw it in because I think it's cool. Uh, but we